Hello friends, John LeBon here on Monday the 30th of November 2015 and today we're taking a look at the monkey ladder banana experiment and the reason why we're doing this is because it's instructive when it comes to the topics of skepticism, research and the importance of primary evidence and we'll get to all of that in a moment but for those of you who aren't aware the monkey ladder banana experiment goes something like this and we'll use this cartoon as an illustration for it basically a group of scientists placed five monkeys in a cage and in the middle a ladder with bananas on the top every time a monkey went up the ladder the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water after a while every time a monkey went up the ladder the others beat up the one on the ladder after some time no monkey dared to go up the ladder regardless of the temptation Scientists then decided to substitute one of the monkeys. The first thing this new monkey did was to go up the ladder. Immediately, the other monkeys beat him up. After several beatings, the new member learned not to climb the ladder, even though he never knew why. A second monkey was substituted, and the same occurred, and so on and so forth. When what was left was a group of five monkeys that, even though they had never received a cold shower, continued to beat up any monkey who attempted to climb the ladder. And basically, that's the point of the experiment. They got to a point where, having replaced all of the monkeys who knew why they were beating up whoever went up the ladder, slowly but surely, they got to a point where none of the monkeys had actually ever been showered. They just knew that if someone went up the ladder, they had to beat him up. And this experiment is used as, I guess, an indication of herd behavior, crowd psychology, these kinds of things. Now, if you type in monkey banana ladder experiment into YouTube, you'll get a whole bunch of results, some pretty good illustrations. A number of people have taken the time to try and show how the experiment worked with their own videos. And it's all very interesting and it seems like it's useful, but there's one major problem. The five monkeys experiment never happened. Now, this article that I've got here is from Throwcase. This was published on December 21, 2014. And here is an illustration of that experiment that uh, I just showed you before. Let me read out a section of the article, a small section, and then you can read the rest yourself. Links for everything I show you today will be provided in the info box below. Quote, apparently it is supposed to describe a real scientific experiment that was performed on a group of monkeys, and it is supposed to raise profound questions about our tendency to unquestioningly follow the herd. Unfortunately, it is complete and utter nonsense because no such experiment ever happened. Ironically, so many people are sharing this unverified crock of nonsense that it really does reveal our tendency to unthinkingly follow the herd. After all, why would you bother verifying an article about monkeys that literally has the tagline, think before you follow? The story has been doing the rounds since 1966 and it has never been verified. It seems to have first appeared in a book called Competing for the Future by Gary Hamill and C.K. Prioralad, and by appeared I mean it was just made up. The authors never provided a source. None of the authors who have referred to the experiment in the past 18 years have provided a source either. None of the appealing memes or infographics that describe the story now provide a source. Suffice to say, there is no source because the experiment never happened. End quote. Now you can read the rest of this article for yourself and like I said, the links will be provided in the info box below. But you'd have every right to say, well, this is from Throwcase. Who were they? Why would I believe them? And that's fair enough. I'll also provide a link to an article by Psychology Today, published back on March 20, 2012, entitled What Monkeys Can Teach Us About Human Behavior from Facts to Fiction. Or just read out the first paragraph of this article, quote, in a 2011 PT blog post called What Monkeys Can Teach Us About Human Behavior, Michael McCalco described an experiment involving five monkeys, a ladder and a banana. Descriptions of this experiment can also be found on the internet as a result of this story being told many times in various blogs, books, and speeches. The experiment as described in the story, however, never happened. End quote. And again, you can read this article for yourself. I'll also provide a link to a thread at skeptics.stackexchange.com which discusses this myth of the five monkeys later banana experiment and how it is that it came to be propagated so much that people believe it was a real experiment. It looks as though what has happened is that there was an experiment conducted back in the 1960s, which is somewhat similar 
but that experiment did not involve a ladder in the middle. It did not involve a spray of water onto the monkeys. It did not involve monkeys beating one another up. So when I say that they're somewhat similar, that's being very generous. So again, you can check all of this out for yourself. Now, you've probably already detected for yourself the irony of this, that a supposed scientific experiment, which allegedly proves the crowd psychology or the herd behavior of humans, just acting in a way that everybody else acts, the propagation of that is proof, in a way, of what the experiment is supposed to prove, the way that people just do what everyone else does, repeat what everybody else repeats. But the thing is, if you consider yourself skeptical or a researcher, you should never repeat the stories of scientific experiments, so-called scientific experiments, until you've checked them out for yourself. And to me, it seems like this is exactly what you should do for any claims that you're making, especially when it comes to things like so-called science. So what I'll also do is provide a link in the info box to this basic page from the University of Maryland talking about the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. Now, for the benefit of those of you who won't take the time to read this article, let me just quote what they use as a definition for a primary source. Primary sources are original materials. They are from the time period involved and have not been filtered through interpretation or evaluation. Primary sources are original materials on which other research is based. They are usually the first formal appearance of results in physical, print, or electronic format. They present original thinking, report a discovery, or share new information. Note, the definition of a primary source may vary depending on the discipline or context. Examples include artifacts, audio recordings, diaries, internet communications on email, interviews, journal articles published in peer review publications, letters, original documents, patents, photographs, and so on it goes. Secondary sources, definition, Secondary sources are less easily defined than primary sources. Generally, they are accounts written after the facts with the benefit of hindsight. They are interpretations and evaluations of primary sources. Secondary sources are not evidence, but rather commentary on and discussion of evidence. However, what some define as a secondary source, others define as a tertiary source. Context is everything. And they give examples such as bibliographies, biographical works, commentaries, criticisms, histories, textbooks, all these kinds of things, and so on it goes. Now, this is just a rough list. Some people will disagree about what constitutes primary and what constitutes secondary, etc. But the point I'm trying to make is that genuine researchers will, wherever they can, try to get primary sources to support whatever claims they're making. And of course, this is presupposing that you're trying to find sources, evidence for the claims that you're making, which obviously you should be. So what I'm trying to say to you is, if you're gonna be making claims, especially about so-called science, and scientific experiments, A, you should be able to provide sources for your claims, and B, where possible, you should be using primary sources. Because in the case that we've seen with this supposed monkey experiment, you can find secondary sources which refer to the experiment, but unless you check the experiment for yourself, then you're not gonna get the truth about it. Because people are trying to suggest that the Stevenson experiment from the 60s is similar to this, when if you look into it for yourself, you'll find out that it is not. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say about this. Just recapping the five monkey banana ladder experiment. It's been debunked, it was already debunked years ago. I'm simply sharing with you now some of the articles that have been written about how it's been debunked in the info box below. You'll find this cartoon, a link to this cartoon. I'll give you a link to the throw case article, which goes into more detail about how this experiment never happened, as well as the Psychology Today article, which does the same thing. They look at the primary evidence and show you how the experiment as presented simply did not happen. And I'll also provide you with this um, basic primer on what is primary and secondary and tertiary sources. So thank you for listening. Hope you've got something out of this video. This has been John LeBon on the 30th of November 2015. And until next time, take care of yourself.